Hello students today I'll do the second lesson from the book of flamingo that is lost spring this chapter has been written by Anish Jung and uh, in this video we would learn the explanation in English to English for class 12th CBSC before starting the chapter I request you not to forget to subscribe and share the channel if you are first time on my channel so without wasting the time let's start it first of all as the screen revolves lost spring stories of stolen childhood in this chapter we would learn two stories of two boys they belonged from a poverty state where they would work harder and harder for their livelihood. In this chapter, Anish Jung describes the story of two boys whom Anish Jung met. Before starting the chapter, uh, let us know something about Anish Jung. Anish Jung was born in 1964 in uh, Raurkela and spent her childhood and adolescence in Hyderabad. Okay, Anish Jung, she was born in Raurkela and spent her childhood, she, <coughs> she enjoyed her childhood and uh, adolescence, just you can say teenage in Hyderabad. She received her education in Hyderabad and uh, in the United States of America. She got education or she studied in Hyderabad for her beginning uh, education and in the United States of America also. Her parents were both writers. Okay, her parents, Anis Jung's parents, both were writers. Anis Jung began her career as a writer in India. Okay, Anis Jung, I mean, this poet is started her writing career and skill in our country India she has been an editor and columnist for major newspapers in India and abroad she has been editor okay editor just you can say uh, who edit the newspapers and informations in the newspaper and columnist okay columnist to add headings in the newspapers and so many things uh, in the newspaper of India and uh, abroad now and has authored several books also she wrote some uh, books also the following is an excerpt from her book titled lost spring stories of stolen childhood okay it means in these both stories you will study the meaning and the story related to stolen childhood how does uh, this society steal the childhood of uh, innocent child here she analyzes the grinding poverty and traditions which condemn these children to a life of exploitation she analyzes she studies abstrusely the grinding poverty which is unchangeable and traditions okay due to this poverty the tradition which has been adopted by these poor people which condemn these children which just forces these children to live uh, sorry to a life of exploitation okay exploitation means to work uh, just you can say hopelessly for their livelihood now we will start the explanation directly. Sometime I find the rupee in the garbage. Okay, this is the heading for starting the first part of the video. Sometime I find a rupee in the garbage. There is a child 
okay whose name uh, is shahab alam okay shahab alam says that sometimes i find a rupee in the garbage garbage just you can say just been uh, in which we throw uh, useless things okay uh, from our home whenever we clear and uh, dust the floor and so many rooms also so we find useless things and we throw it into the dustbin so sahib was the uh, boy and uh, he uh, belongs uh, from a muslim minority and he wanders here and there for wandering useful things in the garbage so anish jan asks why do you do this i ask sahib whom i encounter every morning scrounging for gold in the garbage dumps of my neighborhood okay anish jan the writer of this chapter asked sahib why he scrounge and encounter every morning for gold in the garbage dumps of my neighborhood okay asks sahib anish jan asks sahib that why do you wander here and there okay because anish jan encounters uh, sees him daily in the morning scrounging searching for gold in the garbage in the dustbin dumps heap of my neighborhood okay sahib left his home long ago sahib left his home long ago it means he was migrated from his home to that area before many uh, many years okay said admis the green field of dhaka and they used to live in the field or green field of dhaka his home is not even a distant memory his home it means he did not memorize his home even his past time there were many storms that swept away their fields and homes okay many storm came to that area to that place where he lived in his past time and swept away destroyed their home um, literally his mother uh, tells him it has been stated or described by his mother that is why they left looking for gold in the big city where he now lives okay hopelessly because their home and their all the property has been swept and destroyed by the storm so that they left the place and migrated for this new area where they were wandering here and there to search gold useful things in the garbage in this city where they live now i have nothing else to do i have nothing else to do he mutters sahab says to anish jung slowly that i don't have anything else to do looking away and he was not matching his eyes to the anish jung go to school i say glibly suddenly this word came to me and i spoke it out go to school realizing immediately how hollow the advice must sound but after some time i immediately i realized that this is very hollow advice must sound what did i say which is not useful which is not worthy it means my advice was completely useless for the child for the boy who wanders here and there for searching gold useful things in the garbage how is it possible that on my advice he'll visit his schools now next page there is no school in my neighborhood when they build one i'll go sahib replies to anish jung to the writer that there is no school in my area in my neighborhood okay when the school will be available i'll go to school if i start a school will you come i ask frequently you will get i okay i it refers 
to the writer of this chapter Anis Jung. Okay. If I start a school, Anis Jung says that, will you come to my school if I'll uh, start a school? Half joking. It was half joking or uh, just you can say uh, making fun. Yes, he says, is smiling broadly. Sahab smiled and said affirmatively, yes, I'll come to your school. A few days later, I see him running up to me. Is your school ready? Anish Jung says that one day I met Sahab, okay, and he was running towards me asking, is your school ready now? It takes longer to build a school, I say. Anish Jung says that I replied, the Sahab, or I replied that boy that it is very difficult or it takes a long time to build a school okay it is not so easy to open and build a school embarrassed at having made a promise that was not meant but promises like mine abound in every corner of his pre bleak world it takes longer build a school as Anis Jung replied that it is not so easy to build a school immediately embarrassed I was Something, something, just you can say regrettable at having that type of promise which was not easy to be fulfilled. But promises like mine, as I promised to that child, abound in every corner. They got so many promises like mine in every corner in their bleak world. Okay, just you can say darkened world. After months of knowing him, I asked him his name. Constantly, I kept meeting him or uh, seeing him in my neighborhood. And I knew well about uh, his work and his behalf. One day, I asked for his name, sahib alam The boy replied that my name is sahib alam he announces he does not uh, know what it means but the child the boy did not know the meaning of his name if he knew its meaning lord of the universe anis chung says the writer says that the meaning of sahib alam of that uh, i mean child's name was lord of universe this is the name of muslim minority sahab a alam alam just you can say universe and sahab just you can say owner in our sense so lord of universe he would have a hard time of believing it if he would know the meaning of his name it would be very harder or hard for him to believe on it unaware of what his name represents the boy was unaware unknown to the name or to the meaning that his name represents he roams he wanders in the streets with his friends an army of barefoot boys who appear like the morning birds and disappear at noon there were so many boys along with sahab okay it was just like the band of army they wander here and there in the street for searching and scrounging the useful things gold okay gold here the gold word has been used to show the value to add the value of the thing which they were searching for okay over the months i have come to recognize each of them and his jung says that within a month i recognized and identified all of them all the boys who move and wander along with sahab alam why are not you wearing chappals? I ask one. Anish Jung says that I asked a boy out of them why they uh, do not wear the chappals. Okay, chappals, sleepers that we wear in our feet. My mother did not bring them down from the self, he answers simply. The boy replies affirmatively that my mother did not provide me because the chapels had been 
kept on the self self just you can see it is a kind of almira okay he answers simply even if she did he'll throw them off at another there was another boy who spoke he says that even if she did he all throw them off he says that if her uh, sorry his mother gives him chappals he will throw them out because he is very careless and he uh, doesn't pay attention for his things that's why his mother doesn't provide provide him chappals at another who is wearing shoes and the boy who replied and do uh, who spoke these statements he was wearing shoes okay that do not match it means the shoes were not matching together okay it means both both uh, both shoes were different in shape and size and uh, they are looking also when i demand or when i comment on it he shuffles his feet and says nothing okay when i shuffles when i knocked for the different sorry different shoes in his uh, feet he says nothing i want shoes says a third boy there was another boy in their team who says or who said that i want shoes okay he has never owned a pair all his life and that boy had never uh, got a pair of shoes in his life it means throughout his life he never uh, wear a shoes traveling across the country i have seen children walking barefoot in cities on villages roads it is not lack of money but a tradition to stay barefoot is one explanation i traveled across the country i wandered so many places across the country i have seen many children walking barefoot without slipper in cities on villages roads okay but it was not lack of money it was not due to lacking of money but a tradition it was a tradition to stay barefoot okay as we believe that whenever we are going to enter into a temple or religious places holy places we should take off our shoes slippers whatever so in that area it was the tradition okay to stay barefoot is one explanation is one explain to me now i wonder i wonder if this is only an excuse to explain away the perpetual state of poverty i wonder i thought this is only an excuse to explain okay this is only to uh, just you can say to take an option okay to hide or to uh, explain away a perpetual unchangeable which can't i mean which can't be changed state of poverty poor poor sin which is uh, known as poor sin okay i remember a story a man from udp once told me as a young boy who would go to school past an old temple okay i remembered i recall a story a man from udp there was a man in udp once told me as a young boy he would go to school there was a young boy and he went to school in past time an old temple where his father was a priest okay and the boy's father was a priest in that temple he would stop briefly at the temple and pray for a pair of shoes the boy daily stays okay and stops there near the temple and prays for a shoes okay 30 years later i visited his town and temple which was now drowned has been destroyed this you can say drowned means destroyed in an air of desolation okay it means a uh, very a uh, primitive primitive place just you can say very old place 
in the backyard where lived the new Christ. Okay, there were red and white plastic chairs. A young boy dressed in a grey uniform, wearing socks and shoes, arrived, panting with a, a heavy breathing. Okay. Yes, 30 years later, I was at his town. I went there for after 30 years and the temple, which was now drawn, which was completely ruined and destroyed, and it was primitive place. In the backyard where lived the new Christ, and new Christ came there in the backyard of that place, there were red and white plastic chairs, a young boy dressed in a gray uniform. There was a boy, okay, who was wearing a gray uniform, wearing socks and shoes, arrived, approached, I mean, came there, panting with a breath, high breath, the heavy breath, just you can see, and threw his school bag on a folding bed. There was a folding bed, okay, and he threw, he kept his bag, school bag over there. Looking at the boy, I remembered the prayer another boy had made to Goddess when he had finally got a pair of shoes. Okay, I remember that boy who always used to pray, okay, staying near the temple for a pair of shoes. So, finally the Goddess, uh, Gaidi, sorry, Goddess had fulfilled his desire and gave our, the boy got a new pair of shoes. Let me never lose them. The goddess had granted his prayer. The boy says that I'll never, um, I'll never lose. Okay, this pair of uh, chapel sarsus. The goddess had granted his prayer. Means the goddess uh, has fulfilled his desire, whatever he begged for. Young boy, like the son of the prize, now wore shoes. Okay, young boy. There are so many boys who wore shoes like the son of Christ. But many others like the rag pickers. Rag pickers means uh, uh, the boy or the person who wanders here and there for uh, picking. Okay, for getting uh, useful things from the dustbin. As we could see in our neighbor in our villages. Yes, but many others like the rug, pick, uh, rug pickers in my uh, neighborhood remain shoeless. Okay, but not at all. There were so many rug pickers, so many uh, wandering boys here and there who were shoeless. Okay, they did not have shoes to wear. My acquaintance with the barefoot rug pickers leads me to Sima Puri. As I experienced for many examples, with a barefoot rag pickers, wandering boys, leads me to Simapuri. I went to Simapuri, a place on the ferry, sorry, periphery of Delhi. Periphery, just you can say, last uh, area, just border of Delhi, yet miles away from it. Okay, I mean periphery, the border of Delhi. There was a place, Simapuri. It was miles away, miles away from Dhaka. Metaphorically, just you can say, those who live uh, here are squatters who came from Bangladesh back in 1971. And the people who lived there migrated or came from Bangladesh, okay, in 1971. I mean, at the border of Delhi, it was metaphorically says that this is the border of Delhi. Simapuri, the place which is metaphorically the border of Delhi, which was miles away from that place, Dhaka. And the people who lived in that area, it was reported that they came from Bangladesh in 1971. Sahab's family is among them. Sahab was one of uh, that family which lived in that area. Simapuri was then a wilderness it still is but it is no longer empty simapuri was then a wilderness it still is 
it is still a wilderness just you can see the people adopt the culture of forests and uh, very primitive culture but it is no longer empty but it was no longer empty the place it was just like wilderness forest but it was no longer empty because people migrated there and they made their residence over there uh, for staying in structures of mud with roofs of tin and tarpaulin okay tarpaulin in the structure of mud mud just you can say clay soil the structure and the home were made of soil with roofs of tin the roof of their houses was made or were made of tin and tarpaulin sorry tarpaulin it is made of plastics okay yellow plastic uh, we we could see in our market yellow plastic green plastic red plastic so many colors are available uh, divide of sieves okay sieves just you can say gutter drainage uh, running water life 10000 rag pickers over there and in that area simapuri 10000 dustbin pickers life they have lived here for more than 30 years without an identity they don't have any identity but are, however they are living there for 30 years without permits but with ration cards that get their names on voters okay these children these people live there without identity card but they have their ration cards that get their names on voter list and enable them to buy grants okay they live there for 30 years they don't have anything as identity except ration card which give them the right for voting and balloting and collect their grants for their livelihood food is more important for survival than an identity according to the belief of these people food okay is more important and this is important and this is believable okay because there is a formula bread cloth and house roti kapra and makan so food is more important for survival okay if we want and if, we, if the people want or has to live their life so food is first priority to get and identity is second